Your Bible is a Trinitarian revelation. The God of the Bible is the triune God. The Bible shouts and screams. The God who exists is the Trinity. And Jesus is the Son who became flesh. The God-man. Taking his flesh from the Holy Virgin by the Spirit. As God, he has a father, no mother. As God, he has a father, no mother. As man, he has a mother, no father. No human father sired him. He was born of a woman in respect to his humanity. And his respect to his deity, God is his father. He has no mother. So notice how amazing, mind-blowing our Lord Jesus is. He's one eternal person with two natures. In his divine nature, God is his father. He has no mother. And he's beginningless like his father. In his human nature, Mary is his mother, his holy mother. He has a mother, no father. You see how amazing our Lord Jesus is? And why the demons through their dogs, like uh, Michelle here, manifest because they cannot stand the truth of our God who destroys all lies and falsehood. May our God be glorified, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, now let him finish his last point. And then we're going to go into it. We'll be done. Then I can go back finishing Kelly Powers, Lord willing. Here you go. Last point he's going to make. If you're the son of God, obviously you're not God yourself. Even after the alleged resurrection, where they might have had a chance to believe such a thing, what do they say? They say he was a prophet, Luke 24, 19. And he asked them about the things they were speaking about. And they said, what things? And they said unto him, the things concerning Jesus the Nazareth, or the rich, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word in front of God and all the people. What did they say he was? A mighty prophet. Okay? So just like Islam See? says about him, says. that he was the Messiah, son of Mary, a messenger, right? Quran 4359. He was not but a servant on whom you bestowed sure. favor. So again, don't forget, guys, like, follow. And if you just want to support, okay, that's it. go ahead yeah. and give me a coffee. Appreciate it. Give me a coffee. All right. Now, let's now destroy the final proof text. Show that it's misquoted. And I hope Muslims take his advice. I hope Muslims come and challenge me and quote them. Muslims come. If you can respect yourself and not make threats, death threats, as if I'm scared, I'm shaking at your death threats. My life belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ, like Muhammad's life belonged to him, and your Muhammad is in hell. But my life is with the Lord Jesus, and because I love him, I will live forever. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Make us bold as lions and never back down, never betray you. Seal us by your spirit. All right, now. Here is Matthew 16. I want you to see something, brethren. Watch, I want to show you. How Matthew 16 proves that Jesus claimed to be God, though he's not the Father. And I'm going to use the Quran and the Old Testament to prove it. Are you ready? You guys ready? Let's learn. I want to get the verses ready for you and share them on the screen. Okay? Here's what I want you to see. Matthew 16, 27. Look what our Lord says. The same chapter, Matthew 16. He quoted 13, 16. Finish it. All the way 28. Matthew 16, 27. Look what our Lord says. Are you ready? Let's learn, brethren. Matthew 16, 27. I'm proud of you, Midas. Do you want a bozo button or a cookie? Focus. Midas, do you want a bozo button or a cookie, sir, that you destroy people? Ha, ha, ha. All right, focus, Midas. You got the Midas touch. Matthew 16, 27. Same chapter. For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. Number one, Jesus is that Son of Man seen by Daniel. Number two, God is his Father. So Jesus is speaking of himself. He's not the Father, but the Father's Son. In the glory of his Father. And number three, he owns the angels. You guys see it? Jesus is the Son of Man, and he's referring to the Son of Man of Daniel 7. He owns the angels, his angels, and he'll manifest the glory of his Father, meaning God is his Father, so he's the Son of God. And what will he do? Watch this. And then he will repay every man for what he has done. So Jesus will come, the Son of Man, the Son of God, with his angels, to repay and judge everyone according to their deeds. Pay attention, brethren. Please pay attention. Now watch here. Isaiah 40, verse 10. Let's see if you're going to make the connection. Isaiah 40, verse 10. Watch this, the last. Rachel's a sister. She gets free pass. All right. Isaiah 40, verse 10. We're waiting for it to show up. 
Sometimes it's slow. All right, yeah, I'm chief. I'm working for the All right, let's see. Isaiah 40, verse 10. Behold, the Lord God, Hebrew Adonai, Yehovah. The Lord Jehovah comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. Say what? Who is coming to repay people for what they have earned? To reward people for what they have done? The Lord Jehovah, Isaiah 40, verse 10. But in Matthew 16, 27, Jesus says, He's the one coming. He, the Son of Man, who's the Son of God, comes with his angels to repay every man for what he has done. That's in the same chapter, Matthew 16, brethren. No last than shall be first. You didn't get it. One more time, last shall be first. Isaiah 40, verse 10. Behold, the Lord God, Adonai, Jehovah, comes with might and his arm, his power rules for him. He'll rule in his power. Behold, his reward, Jehovah's reward is with him and his recompense before him. Look at this dude here. Look at this dude. Let's try this a third time. Let's try this a third time. Behold, the Lord God, Adonai, Jehovah, comes with might. Not you, the last. It's wisdom. Change your name, buddy. Change it to doofus wisdom. Behold, the Lord God, Adonai, Jehovah, comes with might and his arm, meaning he will rule in his power, rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him. My buddy Einstein, doofus here, A.K. Wisdom says, oh, it's his arm who's coming. And his arm is going to repay people. It's late. You want me to go and say hi to Butch? Late night? Four in the morning? Is that what you want me to do? Do we get it now? Who's going to come to repay... And reward people for what they've earned. Who's going to come with his reward to repay people for what they have done? According to Isaiah 40, verse 10. Yeah, it's about to come out. Last shall be first. Who's coming to do that? Look at this guy, Nick. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Nick, if you don't show me the word Jesus in Isaiah 40, verse 10, which is on the screen, I'm blocking you. I'm going to block you, Nick. Who is coming to repay people according to what they have done? What is your to repay them according to their deeds, according to what's on the screen? Isaiah 40, verse 10. All right? Okay. All right. Now, let me read it again. Behold. Let me read it one more time. Behold. The Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, the Lord God, Adonai Jehovah, and his recompense before him. But now watch what Matthew 16, the very chapter that was quoted out of context. What did Jesus say in Matthew 16, 27? Let's see if you make the connection. Matthew 16, 27. <clears throat> For the Son of Man, that's Jesus, is to come with his angels, so he owns the angels, and the glory of his Father, so God is his Father, so he's the Son of God, and then he will repay every man for what he has done. So do you see that Jesus just claimed what Isaiah said, Jehovah God will do when he comes. Jesus, I'm the one coming, and I'm the one who's going to do what Jehovah God is going to come to do. Do we get that part? And yet he's not the Father. So Jesus is saying, I'm the Father, but I am the Lord Jehovah, Adonai Jehovah, and I own the angels, and I'll be coming to repay you. That's Matthew 16, 27. And you're going to use the Quran to prove that Jesus claimed to be God. Now you're going to show how the Quran 
confirms that what Jesus said means he just claimed to be God. So Muslims, can you follow Shadid Lewis's advice? Can you come on my stream and use these verses against me, please? Don't attack, don't insult, don't threaten, because I'll laugh at you and insult your prophet, because you don't scare me. The Lord Jesus, my God, is my life and my shield. Muhammad is under his feet. And use this against me. Now, how does the Quran prove that what Jesus just said is something that only God can say, and therefore Jesus claimed to be God? Here it is. Chapter 2, verse 210 of the Quran. The Quran acknowledges with the Old Testament. The Old Testament is God's word. The Quran is not. The Quran in agreement with the Old Testament says, it is Allah, who Muhammad thought is the God of Abraham, and he's not. Allah, who's going to come in the shadow clouds with his angels on the day of judgment. Chapter 2, verse 210 of the Quran. Chapter 2, verse 210 of the Quran. Watch here. Okay. Wait, they for not else, are they waiting for nothing else than that Allah should come unto them in the shadows of the clouds with the angels? Then the case would be already judged. All cases go back to Allah for judgment. So the Quran acknowledges on the day of judgment, it is Allah who comes with his angels on the shadows of clouds. Chapter 89, verses 21, 21 to 23. Chapter 89 Verses 21 to 23. Watch here. 89, 21 to 23, folks. Watch here. Oh, my goodness. Does the Quran agree that what Jesus said only God can say? Here it is. 89, 21 to 23. No, but when the earth, when the earth is ground to atoms, grinding, grinding, and thy Lord shall come with angels, rank on rank, and hell is brought near that day. On that day, man will remember. Man will remember. But how will the remembrance then avail him? So wait, the Quran says, Allah will come, Muhammad's Lord will come with the angels on the last day, shadows of clouds to judge mankind and damn evildoers to hell. Old Testament says it's Yahweh God who's coming. To repay everyone according to their deeds. And yet Jesus says, I am the one, the son of man, who comes with my angels in the glory of my father, and I will judge and repay everyone. Watch here. Matthew 25, 31 to 34. I'm not going to read all of it, just that selling point. So do you see how that very chapter and the context of Matthew, Jesus claimed what even the Quran confirms only God can claim? Here it is, Matthew 25, 31 and 34. Matthew 25, 31 and 34. I hope, Lori, everyone else, you learned a lot about God's nature as perfect, true love, and holy and true, and cannot lie, and free will, and the tree of the knowledge and good and evil, and why it was there. Go back and rewatch this until it becomes second nature. Matthew 25, 31 and 34. Quran says, Allah comes in the shadow clouds with his angels on the day of judgment. Old Testament, Jehovah God will come to repay everyone according to the deeds. The Lord Jesus in Matthew 16, that very chapter in Matthew 25 says, I am the one, the son of man, who comes with the clouds of heaven in my glory, with my angels sitting on my throne, and the nations will stand before me and I will judge them. Matthew 25, 31 to 34. When the son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him. This is Jesus speaking. Then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations. And he will separate them one from another. As a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep at his right hand. But the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand. Come, O blessed of my father. There it is again. Who is the son of man? Jesus. Who is speaking? Jesus. How do we know it's Jesus? Because he says... God is his father, my father. So it's not God the father, it's God the son who's coming. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And the ones on the left, he's going to damn to hell. So wait, the Old Testament says, Yahweh God will come to judge and repay. Quran says, Allah's coming in the shadows of clouds with his angels on the last day, Muhammad's Lord, to judge and damn and say, Jesus says, I am the son of man, the son of God. I own the angels. I will come at that day 
sitting on my throne, I will judge all the nations and repay them according to what they've earned. Right? You with me there? You got it? Now, does Jesus say he will come on clouds like Allah is said to come? Yeah, here. Matthew 24, 29 and 31. Matthew 24, 29 and 31. I may have to do a part four, guys, if you're if you're tired. I may have to do a part four and finish it. I thought I'm going to have to retitle this because I don't want to get you guys tired. Matthew 24, 29 to 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, this is Jesus speaking again. He's speaking. Read the context from verse 1. So the Lord is speaking in reference to himself. Matthew 24, 29 to 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. He's talking about the powers of darkness in the heavenly realm. He will destroy and shake them. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the tribes of this will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So he's the Son of Man who comes in the clouds of heaven, manifesting his greatness and his glory, and he will send out his angels. So here Jesus again claims he owns the angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So, According to the Quran, it is Allah who comes the shadow of the clouds. He is Muhammad's Lord who comes with his angels to judge on the last day. Jesus says, no, I am the Son of Man. I am the Son of God. I own the angels. I come on the clouds of heaven. I will come and sit on my throne to repay everyone according to what they have earned because all nations will stand before me as I judge them. See what's happening here? That was Matthew 16, 27. You cross-reference that with Matthew 25, 31 to 46, and Matthew 24, 29 to 31. So if the Quran is correct, this is something only God can do. And yet Jesus says he does it, and he said it before the Quran is written. That means Jesus just claimed to be God. But he's not the Father because he says God is his Father. So he's God the Son. And in claiming to be the Son of Man who comes on the clouds of heaven, Jesus was identifying himself as the Son of Man that Daniel saw over 500 years earlier. Whom did Daniel see? He saw the Son of Man. He saw Jesus over 500 years before Jesus became flesh and ascended to heaven to sit in throne with the Father. Where do we get this from? Daniel 7, 13 and 14. Daniel 7, 13 and 14. You with me, guys? Are you guys enjoying this or no? Because I got about another hour if the Holy Spirit invigorates me. And maybe we can finish it. Here it is. Daniel 7, 13 and 14. Jesus, who do you claim to be? The one that Daniel saw. I saw in the night visions. And behold, with the clouds of heaven. There's the clouds of heaven. There came one like a son of man. Wait, what did you say? He's a son of man who comes with the clouds of heaven. And that's whom Daniel saw. He saw our Lord Jesus over 500 years before Jesus became flesh, rose from the dead and ascended on the clouds of heaven to the father in heaven to sit and throne with him. The spirit allowed Daniel to see that before it took place in time. Yeah, because it says, I saw, not I heard, I saw the future. The clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. And he came to the ancient of days. Now the ancient of days is God the Father. Jesus, son of man, he comes to his father. So Daniel is being allowed to see, by the Holy Spirit, Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. Because that's when Jesus went to heaven. After the resurrection, physically and bodily, as a son of man, as man, he then flew on the clouds of heaven into heaven itself. To sit in throne with the Father, the Ancient of Days. See? And he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. 
Now, who is the Son of Man? Look how amazing he is. When he came to sit in throne with God the Father after his ascension, to him, the Son of Man, was given what? Dominion and glory and kingdom. Sovereignty, power, kingdom. Some, no, all peoples. That means even the Arabs. That means Muhammad himself who's under the feet of Jesus. All nations, in all languages, even the Arabic tongue, should serve him. Give him ibadah, worship. All nations, all creatures, and all languages must worship him forever because he rules f over them forever. He's their eternal king. His dominion is everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. Why would Shadid Lewis encourage Muslims to quote these verses from Matthew, not realizing these verses are Muhammad's burial, his destruction, because it destroys the Quran, all of the Quran and Muhammad, showing that Jesus is God the Son who became flesh, equal to the Father in essence and glory and power and worship, who is the eternal king who rules all nations, judges all nations, owns all nations, which means he owns Muhammad and Muhammad is under his feet. See that? See how it backfired if you know your Bible? So what are you learning here? You're learning, know your Bible, know how to interpret it, know how not to interpret it, know context. So if they quote a verse, read the verses before and after, and know what the Bible is teaching you. Now, how does this apply to us? What practical application do we derive from these words? What you just read is God's promise. He will come to the earth at the last day the dead will be raised and every one of us will be given a life review and will stand before god and give an account for what we've done so don't let it just go to your head let it penetrate your hearts and impact the way you live and i pray i practice what i preach because these verses are all affirming the lord will return to the earth to judge everyone we all must be ready for that judgment day and that not take it for granted.